Hello friends and welcome back to the dork side. I'm the dork in the road and this is my first ride, first off-road, first impressions video for my new 2022 Yamaha Tenere 700. I'm the dork in the road and I want to be your internet riding buddy so please consider subscribing. This is my new 2022 Yamaha Tenere 700 that just sort of fell into my lap and kind of magical fashion so if you haven't seen the video where I talk about that the new bike day video please give that a look I'll link it for you and I also picked up a Nord in 901 so check out that new bike day video I'll link that for you too both up here and in the description but so my plan is to do some sort of compare contrast Nord 901 versus Tenere 700 so today I'm out doing the first ride on the Tenere 700 in the exact same place I did the Norden 901 first ride just two days ago. And I'll link that video for you too if you want to check it out. But my goal is to try to do as many similar things as I can on both bikes to really compare apples to apples experience uh, up to and including they have the same tires on them right now. I'm out here on the Tenere and uh, it's not fully stock at this moment. I haven't swapped out the tires. I have done a couple things. I added this crash protection. These are the Tusk crash bars. And I've got the Tusk rear rack, obviously my Giant Loop Diablo tank bag. And then I took the stock handguards off because the bolts fell out. And uh, I didn't want to deal with them flapping in the wind. Oh, and I've added, this is my favorite dual sport and adventure hack. I added this $20 Mad Dog seat cover. If you remember, I had one of these on my CRF250L. And it made a huge difference with that stock seat. And i got to tell you, my least favorite thing about this Tenere so far is the stock seat. So I spent 20 bucks on one of those and it made a big difference on the way out here. But I'm headed up this, it's paved here, but we're going to hit gravel at the top and try to hit some of the exact same areas we hit with the Norden. I'm hoping there's less snow than there was two days ago. We're in the middle of this weird April winter thing. Seat height on this is a little higher than what I'm used to. It's like the seat pad adds even more. So I'm definitely tippy toeing on this bike more than I have on some of the others, even though supposedly the seat height's lower than my DRZ, but that's not what it feels like. My overall first impression of this bike is it feels like a very precise machine. All the tolerances are precise. The shifting is precise. The acceleration is precise. It just feels like a well-engineered machine. Everything is in place, well put together, solid all around. That's just the first impression you get when you ride it. That's on the street and off. I will tell you, I wish the windscreen was about an inch taller because on the highway, the buffeting hits me right about eyebrow height and it's pretty noisy. They do make bracket adjusters, aftermarket bracket adjusters to move the windscreen up and down. And I think I'm definitely gonna need that. The stock tires are actually okay on gravel and pavement, but they're not great in the mud and snow. I know that from my Norton test ride, so they're gonna be replaced very soon. Stock seat I don't love. Uh, plenty of power to ride on the highway. It's really fun on the street. A corner is really awesome. I was leaning over super far. So it just eats up the miles on the highway. It doesn't complain, you know, which makes sense because it's that FD07 engine. It does feel a little top heavy. That's been a big complaint of it when it starts to tip. But overall, it feels so nimble. It tips into corners very easily. And in my head, this is the bike I want to be on if I'm going to be tackling more difficult terrain. Now, the big difference between this and the Norton is besides the price tag is power. The Norton's got about 30 more horsepower and then just all the electronics. The Norton's got, you know, ride mode, traction control, uh, different ABS settings, all of that. And this thing has ABS on or off. That's it. So this is your bare bones basic machine. I've actually cranked up the preload on the rear. That's the only suspension adjustment I've made to this bike because I know that I'm heavier than the average rider and heavier than the people they set these bikes up for. But you see, it just leans into corners like a street bike. It is very confidence inspiring as a machine and just really fun. The motor's not as fast as the Norton, but it's so playful. It's punchy, it's quick. It's got exactly the right amount of power. If you want more, you twist the throttle and there's more there always, but it never sort of just comes on and surprises you. I've been surprised by the Norton a few times. Yeah, I thought we might catch these guys. Which sucks because this road is fun, but oh, they're pulling over and they're trying to, but this guy behind sucks at it. I guess I'll go in the ditch then. Oh, not good. Not good. Not good. Yeah, side hilling on these tires in the mud sucks. There's a perfect illustration. They just, the knobs are not deep. They don't do loose stuff at all. And I know the snow traction sucks because I got up here and got super sideways on the Norton and almost dropped it with zero crash protection. So that was a little scary. It's got everything you need and nothing that is superfluous extra. It doesn't really have many luxuries. It's, you know, and that's the point. It's the cheapest, most capable adventure bike that you can buy. It's, the, it's a great value if you can find one for $10,000. If you don't want modes and, and, you know, different kinds of ABS and uh, traction control and all the other fancy computer stuff, you don't have it with this. It's very bare bones, basic, reliable. Look at this simple LCD display. You know, it looks like 
a freaking Casio watch from 1993. It's a great bike. I am already more comfortable on it than I was, I think, on my Africa Twin. Part of that is because my skills have just improved, but it just feels so much lighter and more nimble. So we went right first here last time up to the, where we hit the snow, but I had seen snow by this point, so I think we've got it pretty melted. But let's set, check out that side road I got stuck on. Yeah, there was definitely snow here. There's some on the side of the road, you see it, but not on the road like there was. It's still wet, but snow has vacated the road means we can probably get to the top so this is the side road with all the snow on it looks like the road's clear this one isn't unless someone's been down here yep this is all snow all snow i was not digging it Ooh, we can ride through a little snow oh yeah spinning that rear Ooh, this thing the front end comes up easy easy like it's designed for it almost like the rear wheels being driven into the ground and pushing it forward or something crazy right weird i really like the standing position on this more than the norden this bike is more comfortable standing at least where the bars are stocked than it is sitting so this bike requires more of you than the norden the norden you know modulates the traction for you you actually have to be careful use your clutch and all that with this bike because you know you have all the power all the time for some people that's an advantage for some it's a disadvantage and that'll be one of the biggest determining factors I think between these two bikes is do I feel like those modes and all that electronic stuff uh, adds to the experience or takes away from it and I honestly don't know how I feel about it I, know, I haven't decided if it makes me a better rider or a worse one it makes me more capable but that is that good or bad I don't know oh, oh sh whoa ho, ho. I hate these tires oh I hate these tires we almost dropped it right there no hand guards. It started to slide. Saved it by dabbing, but just barely. Yeah, these tires have to go. Oh, it's just... up those multiple puddles in a row, aka forest whoops, eats them up. Well, you can feel that front end lighten up when you get off the throttle. It makes a difference. You want to accelerate when you turn because it pushes the front end and increases your traction. It's like, uh, it's like cornering on a street bike. Suspension feels solid. It feels light. It's pretty, it's a very nimble bike. Easy to whip around on stuff like this. It's a great fast gravel bike, unsurprisingly. Uh, I like the standing position. It's narrow and easy to grip with your knees. It's easy to lean forward and get up over the handlebars. So much power whenever you need it. Uh, just solid, capable, comfortable. It's confidence inspiring. Fun motorcycle. Definitely work a little harder on this one, I feel like. But again, it's the, it's the lack of modes and all this shit that Norden has does all the work for you. I don't know if that's good or bad. I haven't decided. There's a pretty good view up here I wanted to come take a look at. Not bad, huh? Still snow up on the mountainside. My arm is very sore. Definitely just wants to jump out. It's more work to ride this than it is the other Norden. The Norden is a uh, broken in thoroughbred and this thing is a colt. An unrestricted colt who just wants to run. Don't give a shit about your rules. He knows he wants to run. And you need to let him. Oh. <laughs> I don't even know if I got wet on that one. I think I cleared the puddle. It's a playful bike. It wants you to mess around. Oh, I'm very wet. <laughs> oh, that's what happens when you land a 500 pound bike in a puddle. <laughs> Snowy shenanigans. Yeah, it's good I turned around on the north because this would have been much worse up here a few days ago. Made the right call. Ooh, the top of the hill is snowy. Let's go up there. It's clear all the way to the top. Let's try it. This is not smooth, and I'm not going slow. It's 
no way. There's no way. Anyway, here's the Tenere. Snowy mountains. It's not a bad view, huh? Not a bad view. Okay, let's hit some fast gravel, see how we feel. Honestly, it's gonna be a fourth gear on the gravel, I think. Yep. So that's fourth gear, about 40 miles an hour. This cruise is smooth like a dream. Like a dream. Very confidence inspiring, very planted. Very comfortable riding this very quickly on gravel. Oh, I heard some snow. As I feared, predicted, expected. Feel bad, I guess. I don't really wanna with a lot of snow if I can avoid it. If these tires suck on it. Yeah, I need to be in the other rut at least. I can't believe how much is still up here. This is like six inches deep in the middle. That rear is sliding. Okay, this is what we're doing then. We might go do it somewhere else. Switch ruts at least. maybe not the best thing to do on your bike with 100 miles on it with stock tires that aren't fantastic but here's a good place to turn around yeah okay it just doesn't look like it's getting any better i feel like i could putz through but it's just not smart it's just not smart all right it's gonna do it for me i'm gonna turn around sorry y'all i know you want to see hardcore snow test but sometimes you got to be smart i'm not good at that but i do try it occasionally should we go off the cliff or what do you guys think no okay i'll try not to i guess Put your feet on the pegs, you idiot. Just ride it out. So much better than trying to walk it. Alright. Out of the snow. That's enough snow for today. That's neutral, though. That's third. None of these are helping. Stand up. Keep your weight on the front. Keep that traction. I don't want the front to slide. I don't care if the rear slides. I do not want the front to slide. All right, let's putz back down. It is a solid, confidence-inspiring motorcycle. It feels like a big dual sport and not like an adventure bike. It feels more like a big dual sport than my KLR did, which was actually a big dual sport. Uh, just the weight balance, the height, you know, the way the power is delivered, the flickability, the way it leans into corners, the traction or lack thereof with these tires. This bike feels to me like a big dual sport. I will say the Norden definitely feels more like a very nimble adventure bike. So I hope that makes sense to some of you. It's a very fun bike and I think this bike makes me work to become a better rider and makes me want to improve my skills so I can get even more out of it. It's not too much to handle for an intermediate rider. It's maybe a lot for a beginner. It's also got a lot there that an, that an advanced, experienced expert rider could really squeeze out of it. And riding it makes me want to get good enough to do that. It inspires me to become a better rider. And it makes me a better rider because it forces me to be a better rider. I don't know if I've ever ridden an adventure bike that made me feel that way before. The Norton is the opposite with all the bells and whistles. It makes you a better rider, but it does all the work for you. It's like a cheat code. This one's like, yeah, it's there, but you got to work for it. This thing's really fun on the gravel. It does good in the mud, had it in the snow. Uh, it's obviously really fun to ride on the road and in the twisties. And it'll go anywhere you point it. It's a very capable machine. So as a person and as a rider, I always have that innate desire that when I see a gravel road or a forest road I've never been up, uh, I want to know where it goes. And I'm like, ah, I wish I had my dual sport. I would go see where that goes. And on adventure bikes that I've owned in the past, it's been the same as being in the car because I've always been nervous or anxious about getting to the end of a road and having it be a dead end or coming across a log and having trouble turning around. And so adventure bikes were definitely more point A to point B transportation for me and less let's go explore and I know we can take on anything that's there. Adventure bikes are good, you know, I don't mind if there's a log in the road or there's some muddy stuff. 
Like I can get through stuff on a decent road, but if I'm gonna go into abandoned territory or anything remotely resembling a trail, I wanna know there's a place I can turn around at the top, at least in the past on adventure bikes. The KLR was less like that because I felt like I could turn it around pretty easy, but this bike feels like a dual sport to me. When I see a, a dirt road when I'm on this bike, I don't even hesitate. I just wanna ride up it rather than being like, oh, I wish I was on my other bike. Uh, I see it and I go, let's hit it because whatever's up there, we can probably ride around it. And this thing is easy enough to turn around and deal with. I know I just did it a couple times that if we come across something we don't wanna ride, through it just turn around pretty easily and so it's very confidence inspiring that way too it just feels very capable so that's the biggest takeaway from today and riding it off-road and it's even confidence inspiring with these stock tires which i don't love so i'm really excited to get some decent knobby tires on this suspensions quality the engine's obviously one of the best ever made most reliable most fun punchy playful engines this thing rips on the street and it's really fun on these twisty roads it's an all around just super fun bike it's pure fun top to bottom it feels incredibly well put together it feels precise a satisfying clunk when you go into each gear there's no play or slip everything's just precision uh, in a way that other bikes i've ridden including the norden don't feel and that's that japanese yamaha engineering and again part of it might be psychological but i'm just telling you this whole bike has a very crisp well-built feel which is remarkable because it's not like they've been making tenere's for you know decades it's like the second year they ever made them but basing it on an engine that's already been very successful and and building around that has it's, it's worked out very well for yamaha so this is a fantastic motorcycle and if you get a hold of one and you're at all interested in this mid-sized adventure bike that'll do it all i don't see why you wouldn't i feel very confident that this would be easy to cruise for hours on the freeway um the seat is an issue this pad is helping quite a bit so you could start with that if you got one and the wind protection is not fantastic but these are not deal breakers it is far more comfortable than the klr was it's just not straining or vibrating or buzzing and it's great on the street so it's super fun on the street very fun off-road it's a great bike those are my first impressions of the Tenere 700, but lots of Tenere content to come. We're going to build out both bikes. We're going to compare both bikes. We're going to do all kinds of similar stuff, just like this. We rode the same place on both bikes under similar conditions. You know, we'll try some camping trips, do some other stuff on both bikes and see how we feel. So make sure you're subscribed for that, for the future Tenere content and for the future Yamaha versus Husqvarna content, if some, that's something that interests you. I also want to give a big shout out and thank you to my patrons and channel members who make videos like this possible. Their support has enabled me to find the, shall we say, financial freedom to buy both bikes and deal with all of that. So big shout out to them. If you're interested in becoming a patron or a channel member, you get early access to videos, merchandise discounts, and other perks. And there is a join button right below the video or a link to Patreon in the description. Also, if you're out buying dual sport, adventure, motorcycle camping, motorcycle gear or parts or whatever in general, and you want to support the channel without paying any extra money, you can always use my links to Moto Camp Nerd, Revzilla, Rocky Mountain ATV, or Amazon. Those are in the description and in the pinned comment of every video. All you have to do is click that link, go to the site, get what you're getting. I get a little commission. You pay no extra. No must, no fuss. So I really want to thank all of you that have done that in the past. But anyway, that's enough rambling and enough commercials. I just appreciate all the support and I want you guys to know that I see it and it's really making a difference for me and my family. So thank you. But for now, and as always, I just want to say thank you very much for watching. Please do not forget to be excellent to each other. I'll thank you. Excellent! I'll thank you. I'll thank you. I'll thank you. Uh, thank you. Gesundheit. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. The Atlanta song. I don't remember the words. Something about thank you and the crew. Thank you, crowd, for fear. Thank you. Thank you, crowd. Okay. I just lost like 200 subscribers. I love you guys.